Ngabi. Ngabi Giza. Okay. You are live. So hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. We are uh, very excited to be with you here today. And I'm going to turn it over now to Isaac and Shannon, who will take it away. Hi. Hi, everybody. So my name is Isaac Murdoch. And my name is Shannon Paul. But we also have Ojibwe names. And we're both Ojibwe. And my Ojibwe name is Manzanap Kinegego Anabe Minwa Bomb Gijik and Dijnikas. Kinebego Kshibiga is what in Donjiba, Ganabajing, Ganoje and Do Dem, and Nishnabe and Dal, which basically means uh, my name is Revolving Sky. I come from the place where the serpents are painted on the rocks. I'm from the fish clan, and I'm an Ojibwe person. And Shannon, you are? So my name is Ningabi Gizis Ikwe and Moz Dodem. So I said, my name is West Sun Woman and I'm from the Moose Clan. The Moose. Can you actually make a moose noise? Moo. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, so the Ojibwe people, we have we, we belong to the Anishinaabek Nation, which is like a big tribe. And our tribe goes all the way from like Quebec, all the way to the Rocky Mountains, all the way down to like Ohio River, even past towards Kentucky, all the way up to like the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. So um, where my family was born is about three, it's a three day drive from where his family was born and we're both Ojibwe. Wow, that's pretty cool. And me and Shannon are our partners. We're, we're lovey doveys and uh, we live in the forest. And so I thought it would be really good if we told you a story. And to tell you the story, dum, 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 dum. we got a little something. And guess what? Shannon has one too. And this little character here is Nanabuju, or otherly known as Nanabush. And this is? This is Nana Bush's grandma, which I would say kukum. Kukum or nukumis. Yes. And so this is Nana Bush and that's Nana Bush's grandmother. And they're both part of the story. And so I'm going to tell you this little story. A long time ago, right at a place called Ba Ting, which is Sault Ste. Marie, which is in Northern Ontario, there was a great big beaver dam that was holding all the water from Lake Superior from going all over the land. And Nanabuju wanted to walk across that great big beaver dam. But there was a giant beaver that lived there. And all of a sudden, Nanabush's grandmother said, no way, don't even think about crossing that beaver dam. Don't you dare. And Nana Bush said, well, why not? I want to cross that beaver dam. And I'm just going to do it anyway. And so Nana Bush started crossing the beaver dam. The grandmother was so mad. The grandmother was yelling at him. The grandmother was saying, get off that beaver dam right now. <laughs> but Nana Bush <laughs> said, no, I'm going to keep going. And Nana Bush kept going. And then guess what happened? That beaver, that big giant beaver said, get off my beaver dam right now or we're gonna fight. Nana Bush said, you can't defeat me because Nana Bush had special powers. Nana Bush could shape shift, turn into plants and rocks. Nana Bush could turn into a cloud. And Nana Bush was very, very powerful and so Nana Bush could beat up that big beaver. Mm -hmm. Right, Shannon? That's that's how powerful Nana Bush is. He's very powerful. Very. He's, as you can see, he looks very strong. Very, very strong. It's even got little moccasins, a little pack sack. So Nana Bush actually beat up the beaver and got so mad that that beaver busted that beaver dam. 
and it flooded the lands. And guess what? That's how Lake Huron was made. Wow. And that's where we live. We live on Lake Huron. And so when you look at the Great Lakes, there's five of them. And this is how Lake Huron was made. So as soon as Nanabuju busted that dam, all the water flooded into the land and it created Lake Huron. And that's how we got Lake Huron. That's amazing. And so Nanabuju and grandmother still argue over that today. She holds a grudge and says, you never listen to me. And so the moral of the story is always listen to your grandmother. Always listen to me. <laughs> yes. So while we're talking about beavers, um, maybe we'll show you I some will stuff. I'll pass you something. Okay, beautiful Shannon is going to grab these. These are beaver gloves. And these are Ojibwe style beaver gloves. Inside, it's rabbit fur. On the outside is beaver. On here, this is leather that's made out of uh, deer and elk. And they're really warm. When you put your hand into it, mm -hmm. when you put your hand into it, what does it feel like? Oh, it just feels so good. It's like putting your hand into a cloud almost. It feels so soft and warm. Warm. These, I bet these are the warmest gloves in the world. I think they are. We should actually send them to the World Guinness World Book of Records. Yes. And see if they're the warmest gloves in the whole entire world. I bet you they are. So this is beaver. And it's yes. the same animal that we're talking about. A beaver makes dams. And I think we have another beaver thingy over there. And Those, so how long did it take you to make these, Isaac? These took me two days of sewing by hand to make them. Two days. Hour after hour, stitch after stitch. Yeah, so if you want to make something and you're determined, it's totally worth it. It's totally worth the dedication. It's totally worth, worth the dedication. And what does dedication mean? It means when you're committed and you work, you work at it every day <laughs> with a smile on your face. Absolutely. So when you're dedicated and you work hard, you can make something nice for yourself or for mm -hmm. somebody else. At the same time, I made these. Ta-da! Which are moccasins. These are Ojibwe style moccasins yes. and they're made out of moose hide and beaver. And these are my in the house slippers. So when it's cold and wintry outside and maybe the fire went out and the floor is a little bit cold, I put these on and woof, mm. it's instantly my feet are warm. So Isaac, you grew up um, wearing these, correct? That's correct. I always wore moccasins growing up. I never wore shoes. That's right. Yeah. How did you feel when you started wearing shoes? Um, I felt really weird. That's why I can't even wear shoes today. You know what? I actually have to wear Crocs. All the time. All the time because the shoes hurt my feet. They've hurted my feet ever since I put a real pair of shoes on. That's why I like these or Crocs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So totally cool. Um, what else do we have? Well, uh, I know... Have? This is your favorite. <sighs> bum, 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 bum. One for me and one for Shannon. Now, we're going to put them right in front like this. Okay. These are sticks that are handmade, carved with leather in the middle. And you, play, you what, what there is, is you put a ball in here and you pass, you throw it like and the ball lands into there. And then they pass it and they throw it and so on and so forth. So these are playing sticks. It's a ball game. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very fun game to play. And hopefully one day we can play it. Yes. And yeah, those are, those are ball sticks. And they're very, very cool. Yes. Um, so I think 
during these times, we should talk a little bit about safety. Safety. And how we could also make things beautiful. Yes. Oh, wow. So here's a mask. It's made out of moose hide. It's got a liner on it. It's got beautiful beadwork on the side. Mm -hmm. That's all hand sewn. And so when I go around outside, I put my mask on. <laughs> because when I'm safe, that means other people are safe. And when everybody's safe, then everybody's good. So wear your mask. Always wear your mask. Yeah. And you know what? You can make your own mask too. You can talk to your parents or you can find these things out and uh, make your own mask. Yeah, you could sew. Um, it's very easy to sew once you get at it. I'm sure a lot of these do that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Shannon has something pretty spectacular in her, in her hand. And Shannon, do you want to talk about that? Because that's pretty sacred. This is a uh, sweet grass. You've probably seen it before. And um, so since we're here, maybe you could light it. Sure. Just very quickly. Bum, 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 bum. <sighs> it smells really good. Oh, it smells like, like, I don't even know how to explain it. It smells like sunshine or... Sunshine. And like a thousand hugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a beautiful feeling. It's, it's you can't even, ex there is no words to explain how that smells like. It yeah. smells amazing. And what that's used for is it's used to purify our bodies and our mind and to put us in a good mood so that we're not grumpy like this. <laughs> yes. Could you imagine if I was mad all the time? Just, Shannon. Pass me that thing over there. Well, then I'll have to pull out the sweet grass. Oh, automatically I feel better now and I'm not so grumpy. So the medicines really help. Grumpy grass. Okay. Um, we also have an interesting thing over here. And these are old, old, old. Yeah, these are so cute. And they're very, very old. You could tell. You could tell the hide is really old. And like, we're not sure who made these. Um, we can tell it's an Ojibwe Anishinaabe style. Yep. Yeah. So these are very valuable. They're very and old. They're just so cute. They're so old that nobody even knows how old they are. <laughs> Maybe they're thousands of years old. Who knows? Just yeah. thousands. Um, we have a couple of things. Can you pass me that little arrowhead over there? Yeah. I actually have an arrowhead. Okay. So this arrowhead, we do know how old it is. And I'm going to show you right now. This arrowhead is 300 years old. And it was made off of the strapping, a steel strapping off a barrel. Remember those old barrels and they got the metal rims on them that you see in the, in the movies, in the, in the good old Western movies? Mm -hmm. That's what this arrowhead was made out of. And this is a hide scraper for scraping the hides to make the leather, to make the leather, to make the moccasins. Yes. Ta-da! This made this pretty much. So this is a tool, correct? That's a tool. This is a tool to scrape uh, the raw hide from the animal. Yeah. And to eventually make it really soft. Absolutely. And so very, very old. 300 years old. Mind you, um, there's rocks that are gazillions of years old. Um, so this isn't the oldest thing I have. I have a rock that must be a billion years old. Mm -hmm. So if you want something really old, just go get a rock. It'll be billions of years old. And rocks are really special too. They are. Um, how about that, that, that black thing over there? We've got a black thing. 
This looks like a horn. Wow. This is a horn, obviously. And when I was born, it was just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I had it for a long time. And then when me and Shannon started to become boyfriend and girlfriend, she didn't like it. So she ended up cutting it off. And here it is today. And here it is. I'm actually just kidding. This is a buffalo horn. And it's also very old. They say that this buffalo horn is a couple of hundred years old. And it was passed down, passed down, passed down. Very old buffalo mm -hmm. horn. And the buffalo was almost extinct. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it was. The buffalo was almost wiped out, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But the buffalo is making a comeback. There's even buffalo in the wild now. There's buffalo that were where there was never buffalo before. Mm -hmm. And so buffaloes are making a comeback. Yeah, right on, buffaloes. Um, speaking about hide tools, do you want to see some more hide tools? So when you're making leather like this, it takes a lot of work. And so I made Shannon her own set so that she could make her own hide. And we're going to show you one. Ta-da. Well, well, here's three of them. Yes. These ones. These are made out of moose bones. And they're different. And they're quite sharp. They're used for different um, ways. These are the tools to make the, the hide with. They are. So each tool has a specific purpose. So Shannon wraps it like that. And then... <laughs> <laughs> are you actually going to scrape my hide or what <laughs> when there is a hide i'll scrape it okay Down. yeah you get it i get it okay. i get it this one here is for softening the hide so once the hide is actually getting softer and you've worked it down then you gotta like <laughs> and you scrape it down and it makes it soft and you see it has little teeth see them and that's what makes it soft. Mm -hmm. it, it roughs it up. And it's a lot of work. So it's good to have a few partners to take turns. Yeah. This one here. Ooh. This is like the ultimate one. This is out of a moose bone. It's specifically carved so that when you're scraping the hide down, there's a sharp side here. Hear that? Yeah, that's the sharp sound. You hear that, eh, Shannon? Yep. That's sharp. Mm -hmm. That's sharp, like almost like a knife. And so that's some of our tools. And then last one, but not least, this is an awl. This is to make baskets. This is to make the holes in the baskets so that the roots can go through them. And while Shannon holds this, I'm going to grab an actual real basket so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yep. Shannon, while I get the basket, give them your most beautiful smile. Thanks. Uh, He's very, very sweet. So here it is. It kind of looks like, um, you know, like one of those uh, sewing needles for um, when you're like crocheting. It's kind of like what it looks like. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. And you see this basket? This is the top of a basket. <clears throat> You're going to see flowers, thunderbirds, some strawberries. And what this thing here does is when you're putting the roots in, this is what makes the hole. Boof. And then you can put the root in. And these are spruce roots. And so it's very, very good for basket making mm -hmm. made out of a moose bone. And last but not least, before Sanon sings her you, real... You just call me Sanon. Sanon? Yeah. That's, that's your nickname in the house, Sanon. Okay. So before <laughs> Sanon sings the song, I want to show you the, those shells over there. We have something pretty interesting. And you see along Nanabuju's neck, you're going to see these little shells here. Those are wampum shells. And you'll never guess 
That's what the beads are made out of. And there is a little bit of purple here. Yep. And that's where the purple comes from. So it would have taken them a long time to turn this into shells, but it was possible. And did you know that they can only make them in the water? Isn't that interesting, Sanin? Mm -hmm. Sanin, isn't that interesting that they only could drill the holes for the beads in the water? Because yes. you needed the water to cool the beads down or they would crack. Mm -hmm. So it's and very cool. What is the Ojibwe word? This word is migas. 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 Now, they also have something else. You hold it sign. Dum, 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 dum. This here is a wampum belt. Migesa bia agan is what it's called. And it means strings of wampum. And so with the strings of wampum, they would make these images. And of course, this one here is called the gado naginana, which means the dish with one spoon. And it was an old agreement that the people followed, the, the native people followed so that they'd always be able to share everything. And so if you were part of this agreement, you were a pretty amazing person. You were part of the good team. You were one of the good, you were one of the good team players. Right on. Yeah. And so that's what this is. It's a, it's an actual wampum belt, but so it's not. Yeah. It was kind of like, um, means um between people to be nice to each other be nice to each other share be caring mm -hmm. don't be rude whatever you do do not be rude it's actually called the dish with one spoon mm -hmm. and the reason why they want a spoon and not a fork when they eat out of the dish is because the spoon is soft Mm -hmm. And a long time ago, they felt if you had a fork, then you might be able to stab somebody with it or poke somebody with it and they'd get mad. So they used a spoon mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody was really, really super nice. And that's what this belt is. It's the dish with one spoon, otherly known as Gado Naganana. So that's a little bit of history for you. We're very happy to show this to you. Boo -boo. Mm -hmm. And... We don't have much time left and we want to make sure that Shannon sings her amazing song. Now, can I say that 10 times as fast as I can? So that Shannon sings her amazing song. It's kind of a tongue twister in a way. Okay. Okay. Um, so here's the drum. It's also made out of pipe. And what do we usually sing for? Um, when we sing, we sing, we put our sound out into the universe. We put our song out into the stars and the sky so that good health and happiness can go around the world and that children can be safe mm -hmm. and that everybody can get along together and be nice to each other and so that nobody's grumpy like this. You know, so that people have a good life. That's why we sing. Yes. So we're going to sing a song for you. like don't really know the song so i was kind of like kind of just following no. it the best i could how did i do that's Sanin? what you do yeah did it come out okay <laughs> yeah that's what you do when you're learning um songs you just you have to try and you just go along with it right Maybe right you'll pick it up and you sounded really really great good thank you well she gave me a compliment yeah, should we do another good. one you want to do the want to do the first 
Okay. We're gonna do one more song only because we just want to sing for you, right, Shannon? Right. We just want to sing for you. That's all. and you can't stop because it feels good when you sing it does and you get the giggles sometimes you don't know you, and you come at the most inappropriate times mm -hmm. but that's what it's all about is laughter and you know that's a big part of our culture is laughing and making jokes it's true Sanon. it's true <laughs> <laughs> you know um so a lot the old people they would call isaac Isaac, because they had um, an accent, because they only spoke Ojibwe, so they couldn't say Isaac, so they called him Isaac. That's true. They used to call me Isaac. And sometimes they would say, Sanin, Sanin, <laughs> Sanin, not Shannon. Yeah. But anyway, I think our time is coming close to an end. It's just so quick. Yeah, it was so quick. fast. Do you have any parting words that you'd want to say to these amazing, beautiful young people? Uh, I just want to say thank you for joining us today and uh, keep safe and enjoy your day. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Very good. Thank you very much, Shannon. As well as what she said, I'd like to add that let's be really good and kind to each other. Let's be, let's use our good manners. Let's not be rude with each other or make faces at each other. Let's not have grumpy face. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a grumpy face? That's more the, like a questioning face. That, that <laughs> anyways. That's a questioning face. So let's be really good to each other. Let's be kind. Let's you know make sure that we put love into the world and kindness and all of that good stuff that we have. Because you know what? It's going to make everything better and it's going to yeah. make people feel good. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So thank you for joining us. Bama pi gawab men minwa, which means I will see you later again. It's been an honor. It's been an honor. It's been an honor. So thank you very much. So now we're going to press the magic button that is going <laughs> to get us out of this TV world. <laughs> Bye. See you. Bye.